Sports Saturday. Is there anything better than a late spring afternoon at the ballpark? You're never too young or too old to enjoy the game of baseball and all that goes with it. College World Series programs! The College Baseball World Series, an event that continues to get the stamp of approval from baseball fans. It all started in 1947 when the California Golden Bears won college baseball's first title. Then in 1950, the series moved to Rosenblatt Stadium in Omaha, Nebraska, where it has offered an early glimpse of future Major League stars. It is also a place where the dreams of some are brought to life, while others are left shattered, as was the case last year when Stanford stunned the Cowboys of Oklahoma State. It was a dream come true. I mean, everything I've worked for for so long had just been, you know, climax in this one game against a team that I just despised. Stanford is back to defend its title, thanks to clutch wins in each of the last two nights over Cal State Fullerton. But they'll have their hands full with a familiar foe, Pac-10 rival Arizona State, which enters today's final in search of its sixth College World Series championship. Junior high is the, the time I first uh, thought about winning it. Uh, something you watch on TV, see everybody jumping up and down. Um, you know, it's, a, it's the greatest honor I've ever had in baseball is coming to the College World Series. And another dream will be lived out here this afternoon in Rosenblatt Stadium. The NCAA Baseball Championship will be decided between Arizona State and Stanford. The weather conditions in Omaha are glorious for a baseball game. Our temperature in the high 70s, a festive air here. This is one of the big summer celebrations of the year annually in Omaha. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome. I'm Brad Musburger. Eight days ago, eight teams came here. For the first time, they were split into two brackets. In the West, you can see that Arizona State came through the hard way, having lost an earlier game to Wichita State. Then they beat the Shockers twice. As for Stanford, the defending champion, they were seated seventh. They lost to Cal State Fullerton and then eliminated the Titans by beating them the last two times they played. A pleasure for me to welcome Rick Mundy, who back in 1965 was a member of Arizona State's first championship team here in Omaha. Rick, what's it like for a collegiate athlete? Brent, what we have on the field behind us is really a lifetime full of memories for all of these players. And when you step off the airplane here in Omaha and you see Rosenblatt Stadium, you think it's maybe the biggest ballpark in the world, but for many that we see here today, they're going to see much bigger ballparks in professional baseball. The two teams today, Arizona State? Very good matchups. If you look at Arizona State University, normally they come into the College World Series, Brent, maybe very strong in one area and pulling the rest of the areas through. Good defensive ball club, and they've proven here early that they can score runs late in the ball game. And the defending champion Stanford Cardinal. Mark Marcus, is, as he told us, a little surprised that they are here in the College World Series. They do have five returning lettermen from last year's championship ball club. In the last three weeks, they have played their best baseball. They played each other six times in conference play. Arizona State dominated them, winning five of six. But that's all history. This is one game for a championship. The leadoff hitter for Arizona State today is shortstop Pat Listash from Louisiana. Batting second, the slick fielding third baseman, John Finn from Oakland, California. Second baseman, Kevin Higgins, bats third. He's from Torrance, California. The cleanup hitter is first baseman, Steve Willis from Mesa, Arizona. Right fielder, Dan Rumsey is next. He's from San Diego. Then it's D.H. Martin Peralta from Gilbert, Arizona. From Waco, Texas, catcher Tim Spear. The left fielder, Ricky Candelari from Houston. And from Phoenix, Arizona, the center fielder, Mike Barola. And Brett, defensively, Stanford lines up like this for this afternoon's ball game. Brian Johnson will be in left field. Mike Eicher gets the start today in center. Paul Carey over in right field. Moving to the infield down at third base, Ed Sprague will be there. Over at short, Troy Paulson. Frank Carey is at second, and over at first, Ron Whitmire. Doug Robbins will be behind the plate, and the freshman, Stan Spencer, on the mound for Stanford. Ricky's a 6'2 freshman from Vancouver, Washington. What's a little scouting report on what he likes to throw? Well, when you talk to, to Mark Marquis, Brent, a lot of their pitchers have been able to do a, a lot of things. Obviously, in the last three weeks, they have played very well for this young man, a very good fastball and a real good hard slider. And the pitchers that we have seen up until last night have been very tentative in the early innings. But last night, both ball clubs that were able to win that we see here today came out fire. One of the keys for Spencer today is he's not afraid to work inside. 
He believes that the inside part of the plate belongs to him, and that's what Marquis had in mind when he saved him for a possible championship game. Both Marquis and Arizona State coach Jim Brock, veterans of this championship game. Brock has won it twice. Marquis a year ago. Marquis will move on to the Olympic team. Here is Pat Listash. He'll lead it off for the Sun Devils. Two good second basemen in this game. Spencer Redding. Opened him up with a fastball. That's John Bible, the plate umpire from Austin, Texas. What about the strike zone at the College World Series, Rick? Right? One of the first things that we heard is a very liberal strike zone, both inside and out. So the plate's a little bigger. The hitters are going to have to swing if it's close. That breaking ball is outside and low. So along with Bible, who is working the plate, who I just told you about, the veteran Dale Williams is at first base. He's out of Signal Hill, California. Garment's from San Pedro, and Graham is from Clarkston, Mississippi. Hit foul down the first baseline. This is one of the few times that they have decided to go to six umpires at the championship game. Why not? They've got two alternates. Why should they be sitting in the stands enjoying the sunshine? Let's get some work out of them today. Listash, when you talk to Jim Brock, he says he's like a poor man's Ozzie Smith. Does a lot of things very well. Not real disciplined at the plate right now. Line drive past the diving Sprague and the first base hit of the game by Listash, leading off the first inning for the Sun Devils. Take a look at Sprague right there. Here's a young man with a very bright future indeed, and he's done a lot of things at third base, especially here in the College World Series. Not a great amount of foot speed, but he really gets a lot of area covered. Listash on it first, and John Finn. Now, if the Sun Devils win today, Finn is going to be one of the leading candidates for the most valuable player of this World Series. Not necessarily with his bat, but with his glove. He has reminded one and all of a human vacuum cleaner, a Brooks Robinson, if you will, at third base here the last few days. Now, will Arizona State go to the running game early here, Rick? They will go to the running game at any time, Brent. We're really looking at two guys now. Listash has stolen 28 of 31. He's on his own, and the only time that Jim Brock will not have him go is if, depending upon the hitter, but he normally has the green light, as does Finn when he gets on base. Listash wandering over to the first base coach. Gives us an opportunity to talk about the rules. What are some of the key differences, Rick? The biggest one that we're going to see right here is the designated hitter, obviously, is, is going to be permitted. The aluminum bats, that's also permitted, but you do have the option of using the wood. We'll get back to that in a moment. Spencer, you will see pitchers at the collegiate level toss over to first base frequently to hold the runners tight. I would guess that this is a very key inning for a freshman. You would have some first inning jitters in a championship game, and he would like to get past this if he can, and then perhaps settle down a little bit. There's a smash, break, knocked it down, throws to carry, the relay to first base, not in time. Ball was hit hard, but at spread. Sprague, just very good reflexes. Now, watch him here. The ball is hit very hard. Now, these youngsters are picking the ball up out of a shirt sleeve crowd on a very warm afternoon here, but he comes up throwing, and only the speed of Finn is able to stop the double play at first base. There were four Stanford double plays last night against Cal State Fullerton, the big difference, and the second baseman, Frank Carey, was right in the middle of all four. He had himself a dandy game. This is second baseman Kevin Higgins, batting third, a little bit of open stance as Spencer again throws over to Whitmire, who's holding the runner on at first base. Inside, tried to hold up, throw through on the steal, and the Sun Devils will have a runner on at third base on the air. State gets the early break here. Finn also with good speed goes into second base. Now the throw gets away and now you have Finn trying to get out from underneath the shortstop to be able to go. Here you see it. College World Series the balk rule is not being called a lot as it is in the major leagues as far as coming to a discernible stop. So the runners don't have to worry about that. Curry took a little flight through the air didn't he? One ball no strike now. Next pitch. It's two balls and no strikes. So on the throwing air, Finn goes all the way to third base. Sun Devils trying to break through in the first, and Spencer has fallen behind in the count. 
That first pitch they just corrected on the scoreboard, Rick, on that check swing, he did go around. Bible got help from one of the base umpires, so the count is two balls and one strike with one out. Infield is back. Get on the ground, foul, first base side. We could again check back on those rules, Rick. Well, relaxed walk, we talked about that. The interpretation has not been really uh, enforced that heavily. No roll blocks are going out of the baseline at second base, something they have watched very, very closely here, and the double ear flaps required from all the hitters. And when they're on the bases, too, as one of them, the pitch from Spencer again. State with a runner on at third. No score. We're in the top of the first inning. This is the NCAA championship game. Stanford against Arizona State. Finn bluffing at third. Swung on a miss. Gets away from the catcher. First base not occupied. He'll have to throw down, and Finn will hold at third. So two out of a big strikeout for Spencer. How about the ballpark here, Rick? Rosenblatt Stadium and the dimensions. When you talk to the coaches, Britt, they will tell you it's a big ballpark. Down the lines, 343 that you have there. The left center drops back to 370. Here's the big dimension. 420, dead straightaway center field. Back to 370 in right center in the right field line. 343, playing on natural surface. But you need some speed, especially in center field with a big ballpark. First baseman Steve Willis is up with a teammate on at third base and two out. Finn again bluffs down the line and Spencer's ready. Takes a strike. An impressive top of the first inning for the freshman. The youngster has really come out throwing well, and I think it's, it speaks well, I think, of Mark Marquis to be able to talk to the youngster and get him to settle down. Very good fastball and good curveball. And it's important too, Brent, to be able to establish himself early here in the ball game, which he's done so far. Target outside, and the ball came inside, swung on and missed. Sometimes, at the collegiate level especially, the catcher will indicate a little too quickly whether he wants the ball inside or outside. There'll be a whistle from the dugout. That time they were even crossing Willis up, or Spencer came inside and crossed up his catcher. One way or the other, the count is no balls, two strike with two out. From the full windup. Hit in the air and playable. The shortstop moves in. Olsen will make the catch to end the inning. The Sun Devils don't score in the top of the first inning. They leave a runner stranded at third base. The top of the order is coming up for Stanford. Frank Carey, the second baseman. Troy Paulson, the shortstop. And Ed Sprague, the third baseman. Another great turnout for college baseball here in Omaha. Let's take a look at the Stanford lineup, how they'll bat today. Frank Carey will lead off from El Cajon, California. Then shortstop, Troy Paulson. He's from Fountain Valley, California. The third hitter is the third baseman, Ed Sprague, from Stockton, California. Paul Carey, last year's MVP, is from Weymouth, Mass. He'll bat cleanup. The catcher, Doug Robbins, is from Moraga, California. Ron Whitmire, a hot bat out of first base. He's from Long Island, New York. Brian Johnson, the left fielder, is the Stanford quarterback from Oakland. Tim Griffin from Cardiff, California. And the freshman moving into center field, Mike Eicher from San Diego. And defensively for Arizona State, Ricky Candelario will be at left field. Mike Barula in center. And over at right field, Dan Rumsey. Moving to the infield at third, John Finn. Pat Listash at shortstop. Kevin Higgins will be at second base. Over at first, Steve Willis. Behind the plate doing the chores, Tim Spear. And on the mound, Rusty Kilgo, the left-hander. Kilgo has spent much of the season in the Sun Devils' bullpen. He has been hit hard in the two appearances against Stanford this year. But again, Arizona State won five of those six games. Coach Brock held up naming his starting pitcher until this morning, but he has elected to go with the left-hander, who will face Frank Carey. His first pitch is right there on the outside corner. And again, a very liberal strike zone here at the College World Series. Some of the coaches saying, I wish they would use it all season and not change the zone just when they come to Omaha. Kilgo ready again. Swung on a foul back, and so he jumps ahead. No balls and two strikes. What does Kilgo like to throw, Rick? If you're going to try and name a major league pitcher, Brent, Kilgo is going to be resembling Tommy John. Not an overpowering pitcher. He'll move around the strike zone. He'll turn the ball over, sink it, a lot of ground balls. And it's an also an excellent defensive ball club Arizona State has behind it. There's the 
first ball throw, one ball and two strikes. What is he, a couple of decades younger? A Stanford coach, Mark Marquis. He was a two sport player at Stanford, and Jim Brock over the other dugout has won two championships already, and the pitch is down on the inside. Two balls, two strikes. So Kilgo again will try to pitch through those first inning jitters that just have to affect the young man in a college championship game like this. That pitch is up high. Get over to second base into center field for a base hit, and Frank Carey leads off with a single. Now, what about the speed on this Stanford team and on the bases, Rick? They also have fair speed. If you're looking at Frank Carey, he has the green light for Stanford being able to move around a lot, and he just continues his hitting. He's been on fire here in the College World Series and in the regionals. Steve Willis will hold Carey on. Troy Paulson, the shortstop, coming up. Paulson, a very steady fielder. Kilgo will throw over to first base. The left hander looking right at the runner over there. We've had a lot of runners picked off here in this World Series. Spear flashes the sign. under the uniform somewhat hard to pick up. It's amazing that this young man was even able to come back and play after major knee surgery. He hits one in the air down the right field line. Coming on now to make the put out is Rumsey. One away for Stanford. Friend right here getting a shot of Frank Carey, but for the left-hander Kilgo to be on the mound, Carey has got to be very sure that the left-hander is not going to be decoying him and give a real good move. So far, Kilgo has not even given his good move to first base. Now he'll square off against Ed Sprague, who was one of the heroes of last year's championship victory over Oklahoma State. His father, a scout for the Baltimore Orioles, watching his son and scouting some other players here today. Carey steps back. He read Kilgo's move that time perfectly. You go back with Ed Sprague. You talk about feeling old. Ed Sprague and I were teammates in Oakland, and the last time that I saw Ed Sprague Jr. before the College World Series was back when he was at top. The very day he had mud all over the front of him. Just a very small topper at the time. I couldn't believe your reaction when he walked up to you in the hotel. Holy cow, how big are you? Drafted by Toronto. Major League potential. We'll see if he lives up to it through the years. Throw on over to Willis and Carey again steps in. It's one ball, no strikes. No score. We're in the bottom of the first. Arizona State and Stanford are playing for the NCAA Baseball Championship. It's outside. Something this year that has helped Ed Sprague be a much better hitter is he not trying to pull everything here in 1988. Made the adjustment and realized with the power that he has, it's more advantageous to he and his ball club to use the entire ball club. Go with the pitch. Some Devils on the left side, Rick, are playing him to pull a bit. Finn is shaded toward the line. Sprague gets it in the air and deep to left field. Back to the warning track. Jumps up, and Ed Sprague has hit the first home run of this championship game. strong young man gets the ball and drives it. Now the wind is blowing very strongly to left center field but gets the breaking ball here a little bit on the end of the bat but that might be the difference between aluminum and wood. But for Ricky Candelari in left field he goes back fighting the sun but the wind just keeps the ball in the jet stream. Paul Curry last year's MVP do up and he lines a single to right field. Past a uh, diving Higgins at second base, and that is the third hit off Kilgo here in the first inning. In a championship game like this, Brock, an experienced coach, will not wait long to make a move. Stanford to Arizona State, nothing more in the bottom of the first. Last night, Arizona State exploded for 19 runs. So when you play against them, Rick, you would have to believe that you've never got enough. 
Here comes his cousin, Doug Kilgo, the pitching coach for the Sun Devils, out to the mound for a conversation with Rusty. The first thing he did was check with catcher Tim Spear exactly how he's throwing and maybe where those pitches were. One certainly to Ed Sprague and then coming back again to Paul Carey. But it is important for the youngsters here to realize that both ball clubs coming down, there's only one game and they played one another. They know the staff forwards and backwards because of their past performances against each and every ball club. Arizona State, they obviously cannot afford to let Gilgo maybe get out of sync and a little get too far behind in the counts and certainly in the score. Keep a close eye on him right now. Ed Sprague's two run homer puts Stanford ahead 2 0. Runner on at first, one out. This is the catcher, Doug Robbins. Last minor warming up in the bullpen. He pitched one very strong game against Stanford during the regular season. So if Kilgo can't get out of this inning, we'll see him quickly. It's two balls and no strikes. Robbins, the unofficial team captain for the Cardinal, and they like to use him on the hit and run. So with Carey, who can run a little bit at first base, it'll be interesting against Kilgo to see if they're going to try and put some situations in motion here early in the ball. as an outfielder now the sun not really that much of a factor but as the game progresses it will become a factor to the left side of the infield and then to left field too and battling that wind on top of it. Wind's been blowing straight out here all morning. Another pitch on the outside corner and he has jumped ahead no balls and two strikes. Scoring first in a major championship game is always important. And here the team that has scored first has won 10 of the 14 games so far. Stanford was the exception last night. Ground ball up the middle, base hit. Perry takes the turn and he'll come in to score. And moving on to third base is Robbins. And taking second is the hitter Whitmire. And Stanford leads 3-0 in the bottom of the first. Much more than just take the lead. Now, first of all, it's the base hit, the single that gets through on a good breaking ball out away from him. But here is where Arizona State really gets rattled, just not covering the bases, not shutting the runners down, and consequently, after the single, Stanford winds up with runners at second and third here. is left fielder Brian Johnson who for the last couple of months of the football season was the starting quarterback for the Cardinal and that will be it for Rusty Kilgo. He did not make it through the first inning. Blast Miner the 6 3 senior from Winton California comes on. And we'll return to Omaha in just a moment. Stanford knocks out Rusty Kilgo. Blast Miner comes in. Stanford leading 3 0. Runners on at second and third. Miner back on March 25th pitched a complete game victory over Stanford 9 1. What does he feature, Rick? 
He started nine games for Arizona State, finder and run average. A very hard thrower indeed, a fastball and the breaking ball. From the stretch, the first pitch a strike. Johnson struggling at the plate for the Cardinal in this World Series. One out. Stanford up by three. Minor checks the runners. Pitch bounces. Spear able to block it in front of him. Base is Robbins, and out at second base is Ron Whitmire. He singled and took second on the throw. Now Johnson asks for time and steps out. Miner looking into Spear for the side. Pitch is right over the heart of the plate. Now that is Linty Ingram. He was the ace of the Sun Devil staff this year. And Rick, what's happened to him here in the World Series? Just all of a sudden, Brad, he's not been that effective. And quite frankly, Jim Brock did not want to disclose last night after the ball game exactly who was going to pitch today. Minor had to be one of his considerations, and he has come on now in the first inning, down low and on the inside. Two balls and two strikes the count. Listash coming in for a word with Miner. Stanford strikes for three runs here on the first inning, and they're not finished. The big hit, Ed Sprague's two-run home run. Then Paul Carey single after a walk to Robbins Whitmire single. And it's 3-0. Cardinal runners on at second and third. Inside. Off the strike zone. Count is full. First base is open. Tim Griffin, the DH, do up next. Finn over toward the third base line. Goes to the infield pretty much straight away. Line drive to left field. That will score a run and more. Off the wall. Both runners will come around. Stanford takes a 5 nothing lead here in the first inning, and pulling up at second base with a double is Brian Johnson. For Johnson, a big, strong young man, quarterback on the football team. Here you see the 3 2 pitch, and he just jumps all over it. Fastball right out over the plate. No play at all left center off the wall at Arizona State all of a sudden looking up to the Stanford Cardinal Cardinal Brent mm, I imagine the uh, Sun Devils would like to have some of the runs back that they scored last night against Wichita State they exploded for 19 that's the way baseball is sometimes outside the ball and the Sun Devils pitching staff struggling here in the first inning Minor gives up a double to the first hitter he faces. The pitch. 2 0. Not only the Sun Devil pitchers had difficulty in this inning, but also their defense, which is an excellent one, just let them down fundamentally. This match not covering at second base, allowing the runners to go to second and third on just the single here. Finn at third, comes up with a big hop, throw across, Willis has got it, and Johnson moves to third on the throw. Listash tried to bluff him by running out into left field, but the third base coach alertly told him to stay right there. Finn made some dazzling plays in last night's ball game, makes this play about as good as anybody. Coming in, throwing off balance, and for Brian Johnson, a runner at second base, excellent instincts on the bases going over. With Finn coming in, he sees that there's nobody covering third, takes off and makes it a close play, very heads up base running. Two out, runner on at third. 
Stanford five Arizona State nothing here in the bottom of the first. This is Mike Iker who was inserted into center field for today's championship game. Yes, indeed, it is Eric DeGraw. Rick, as I look down there, they had started Iker because it was Kilgo, the right-hander, and they switched to DeGraw in the bottom of the first inning. And now they'll come with the left-handed hitter. And he's going to bunt with two out, pushes it foul. you're wondering why would Mark Marcus bunt here with two out and a five run lead. But listen to some of the scores that these two teams racked up. Arizona State beat them nine to one, 11 to 10, 10 to seven, 15 to six. Mine are ready. Outside. One ball and two strikes. Checks the runner. The pitch hit on the ground at shortstop. Liz Dash with a big hop, throw across, and Stanford scores five runs in the first inning. We'll come back with the second inning. It'll be Dan Rumsey, Martin Peralta, and Tim Spear do up for the Sun Devils. Well, we move to the top of the second. John Dockery is with us here this afternoon in Omaha. And Doc, how are you enjoying the sunshine down there? I'm enjoying the sunshine, Brent. And if you've listened closely, you haven't heard the crack of the bat. That's because the wooden bat in college baseball has gone the way of the dinosaur. It's been replaced by the aluminum bat, as you mentioned, with the ping and the larger, sweeter spot for better hitting. The jury's still out as to whether the ball goes further with the aluminum bat or not, but uh, there are sides on both sides of that. But what's interesting, Brent, nostalgia dictates many of the players here have requested that the crack book come back. So next year, we're going to see the introduction of the graphite bat, which combines the performance of aluminum, but also the sound of wood. Now back to you, Brent. All right, Doc, thank you. And Arizona State will try to make something happen with the aluminum down there. Rick, your feeling about, uh, did you use aluminum back in 1965? No, we didn't use it then. Well, aluminum really hadn't been discovered back then when I, when I played, Brent. But right now, I go to the aluminum during the old-timers game because the sweet spot is much bigger, and quite frankly, it doesn't hurt the hands a whole lot. <laughs> Stanford 5, Arizona State nothing. We're in the top of the second. Dan Rumsey, the right fielder, leading it off here for Coach Brock. Spencer, the freshman now, working with a five-run lead, fires that first pitch in a high fastball for a strike. Arizona State, we said at the top of the show, they're a ball club that has the ability to come back and score runs late in the ball game. But their job right now is to try and peck away, score a run here and a run there, and try and turn the momentum down right now that Stanford has gained early. One and one. DeGraw, after pinch hitting for Iker in the bottom of the first, moves on to center field. Rick, you explained to everybody that the vastness of center field here at Rosenblatt Stadium simply demands that you have a good, strong, defensive center fielder. And that's why Marcus has come back with DeGraw early. That's five. exactly what they have, a very good center fielder indeed. And here's the reason why. When you look to the alleys in left center and right center, it goes back very deep indeed. And for Mark Marquis, well, he told us the other night that DeGraw is maybe the best defensive center fielder in the entire College World Series this year. So Arizona State trying to get back in this game. There's a strike. And runs it. Yeah, Spencer's second strikeout victory. Pretty good pitch here, obviously, because it's the called strike. And one thing that you'll notice during the telecast, Arizona State, when they strike out, they don't walk back to the dugout. As a matter of fact, one of their players was benched the other day for leaving the bat at home plate. They sprint back to the dugout. Discipline comes first with Arizona State. And that's why you would not count them out of a situation like this. First pitch to Peralta is a strike. Peralta has been a hot hitter of late. 
He's done a very good job, and he comes in here, Brent. There you see the numbers. He's put together some very good numbers indeed, but the last nine ball games hit 381 with 18 RBIs and done a good job here in the series. Ground ball. Paulson backhands it at short. Strong throw across. Two up and two down. Nice play by Paulson, and as you mentioned, Brent, here's a young man, a remarkable recovery from a very serious knee injury indeed. Nice backhand play, sets well, the strong throw to first. Catcher Tim Spear, who was suspended for one game in this World Series, now moving back in. He's the home run leader for Arizona State. It's this one. At one time earlier in the season, Arizona State tied a school record by losing six games in a row. They then went on a road trip over to Hawaii. They didn't spend much time at the beach. Coach Brock had four hour practices daily. They were forced to wear names like Selfish, Mr. Sun Devil on their uniforms, and catcher Spear had to run back to the hotel following one of those workouts. You would think that maybe Frank Cush was coaching the baseball team when I was a football coach at Arizona State. He turned that beach into a camp in a hurry. Line drive into the corner in left field. This will go for extra bases. Spear, round second. He'll try for three. Hustling in for a triple. Brent here what aluminum bat will do for you not hit that well but the aluminum bats all the controversy that people talk about it the ball is much more lively coming off of a little problem as it comes off the fence for Johnson out at left field Spear sees an opportunity to go and winds up at third here with two outs for the Sun Devils down five nothing but still hustling with two outs Spear at third here's Ricky Candelari the left fielder inside Spear hit two home runs in a pivotal game in the regional against Pepperdine but that's his first extra base hit in the World Series a team started this showdown a week ago from Friday double elimination until you get to the championship game but in effect what we wound up with in Omaha was a final four last night Wichita State and Cal State Fullerton both were eliminated by Arizona State and Stanford. And it's one game for the championship. Swim on a miss by Candelaria. I think it's easier to promote a one game championship, too, Rick. I think it is without question. And the coaches that we spoke to absolutely love it because they know which day, in fact, the final game is going to be played. Spencer ready. Inside. Two balls and two strikes with two out. Spear the runner at third. Stanford up by five. We're in the top of the second. Left side playing Candelari to pull. Ground ball, high bounce. Spencer backhands it, makes the throw, and Arizona State is out in the second. No runs, and Spear is left stranded at third. And that's the second time Arizona State has stranded a runner at third. We'll be back after this message and a word from your local station. So many great memories at the College World Series. Mike Schmidt played here with Ohio University. Freddie Lynn with some of the great USC teams was here. Then Mookie Wilson came in with the Gamecocks of South Carolina and Barry Larkin now playing shortstop for Cincinnati. He was here. And Will Clark, the great slugger for the San Francisco Giants, showed what he could do at Omaha. And oh yes, there was Rick Mundy in 1965. Rick, you were the first player ever drafted number one back there at Arizona State. What was it like after you were the first pick in the original amateur draft? I had a terrific night, Brent. We came out, we played St. Louis that night. Here I just got the phone calls. We were in uniform, setting the stands, drafted number one. Punched out, struck out four times that night, had a terrific night. But then you went on to a great career with the Kansas City and Oakland A's, the Chicago Cubs, and 
the Los Angeles Dodgers. So here we are in the bottom of the second inning, top of the order, as Stanford batted around in that five run first. And the first pitch is a call strike on the outside corner. Stanford is trying to achieve today what only one other school has done, and that's win back to back national championships at the College World Series. Rod Dato's great USC teams did it here, and they did it with a gusto. They did it with a gusto indeed, and you mentioned Rod Dato. Not too many things that that man has not been able to, to accomplish in the game of baseball. The Tiger, if you will, University of Southern California. Well, I remember coming here and watching some of his great teams play. Texas had a chance to do it in the early 80s, but they could not win back-to-back -back championships. Stanford last year beat Oklahoma State 9-5. to five. There's a ground ball base hit. Frank Carey's second single of the game. And in case you just joined us, uh, look at what has transpired so far. Sprague with the two-run homer. Whitmire driving in a run with a single. He later scored on Johnson's two-run double. As Stanford builds a five-run lead. And you have to go back to 1974 for the Trojans' last triumph. They repeated and won for the fifth straight year, beating Miami 7-3. Pitch to Spear is a strike. So Spear calling the singles with Troy Paulson. The Cardinal shortstop at the plate and Frank Carey leading away. Minor snap throw over to first. Carey dives in ahead of it. for Arizona State will be to try and hold Stanford right here to five runs and then attempt to peck their way back in this game. That was close. Minor with a pretty quick move for right-hander over to keep Carey a little bit close. Carey will run as we mentioned before and Paulson at the plate one of the most consistent players offensively and defensively for Stanford puts the ball in play after that big comeback. It was very promising to see a young man come back with an injury like that. Line drive Set into center field. Carey will move on to third base. With nobody out and the Cardinal threatening again, they put runners on at first and third. You know, Rick, this game reminds me of the NCAA basketball championship. During the regular season, Oklahoma dominated Kansas. They came in that night favorite. Now, during the regular season in the six pack conference, Arizona State. Dominated, winning five of six, but now Stanford has erupted for five in the first. They are threatening here again, and there is activity down in the Sun Devils bullpen. There, Ace Ingram getting ready again, and he will come on here in the second inning. Stanford leading Arizona State five nothing and the Sun Devils will try their third pitcher in two innings when we return. And Stanford threatening again runners on at first and third with nobody on. Linty Ingram the third pitcher used here by Coach Brock. He's out of Longview Texas and uh, what's he feature Rick. You know, Brent, for Ingram, uh, the problem that he had was trying to figure out how to pitch successfully to the Stanford Ball Club during this season. He had 21 starts during the season itself, and he's a strikeout type pitcher. Good fastball, throws the slider, off speed pitch from time to time, but for Stanford, it just totally puzzled Ingram on how to try and get him out. And he faces a tough customer here. Sprague, who homered in the first inning, moves in for his second at bat. With teammates Frank Carey and Troy Paulson on at third and first. There's nobody out. And here's the pitch. Strike. So Frank Carey, who singled, moved over to third on Troy Paulson's single to center field. Runs on seven hits for Stanford already. No runs on two hits for Arizona State. Snap throw first. Arizona State gave nine hits to Wichita State in one game, and that's the most they've surrendered in any single game. And already Stanford has seven, and we're in the bottom of the second. Ingram is ready. 
breaking ball outside swept away from the plate. You should also keep in mind that Arizona State has during the season successfully used the old hidden ball trick reached in their bags of tricks and might keep it in mind here because might be the only way they can get Stanford out so far would be a big out. definitely sent the ball back to him. Right? <laughs> we, won't, we won't get it at this moment. But could it have been a potato? <laughs> yes. Foul. Surprising thing about Sprague, everybody's talking about what he's been able to do. Very bright future ahead of it. No question about that. Drafted by Toronto. But his best position is behind the plate catching. Tremendously strong arm. Job down at third base, tremendous power that he has. There's one on the inside corner and a strong throw down to third, and Finn had to go diving for it to save it from going down the left field line. Well, a run is saved by Finn, who has been an absolute magician fielding at third base. Oh, Finn has done just about everything that you can ask him to do at third base. Fabulous plays that he's made, and he's done it without the use of a trampoline, Brent. We saw him dive and knock down balls two different times last night, and here he does it again, and a tough chance because the runner is blocking him out a little bit in, as far as his sight of the baseball. So Sprague is retired on the called third strike. Paul Carey, who singled during that five-run rally, moves back in for Stanford, his second at bat. seems to be throwing hard. He throws hard, but the location that he's had so far this season against Stanford has not been that consistent. That's the, the problems that he ran into. Bounces away from Spear. The runner on first will move up. But they were more concerned with Frank Perry at third base, and he had no chance to come home on that. So Paulson moves up to second. The tendency in ball games like this is to get behind and out of frustration, try and do a lot of different things. For Arizona State, they've got to try and settle down now. They obviously like to get out of this inning without giving up the two runs that are on base, but they've got to start playing much more consistent baseball here early in the ball game with any hopes of coming back later on. Listash, Bluffing Paulson at second. Now Ingram's pitch to the plate. Swing on and missed. strike with one out. Stanford runners on at second and third. And they lead Arizona State in this championship game five nothing. The pitch right there. He pulled that one in. Ball and two strikes. You can go to your mouth here at the College World Series and in college baseball in general without having to step away from the mound. You must, however, rub your hand off on your jersey, which Ingram did. Breaking ball down low and on the inside part of the plate. Struggling with his breaking ball, his best pitch so far has been the fastball, hasn't he? Bounced it a couple of times, and he better not get it up to Paul Carey, 87 MVP of the College World Series. You can take a look at the jug's gun and see how hard he is throwing, Rick. center field and drifting back is Barola, but this will score a run. Stanford scores on Carey's sacrifice fly with Frank Carey coming in for their sixth run of the game. Six-run lead and attempting to become only the second team in history to win back-to-back -back national baseball championships. Paulson on at third, two out, and here's the catcher Doug Robbins. He walked back in the first inning. Took a breaking ball on that outside corner. All you have to do is hit just the front part of that plate, and if it sweeps on the outside, generally you will get the strike here in college baseball at the World Series, and that's what Ingram did. That one a little bit too far outside, says Bible. Bible, the plate umpire, will be moving on to the Olympics over in Korea. He will be one of the umpires there, and the United States coach will be Mark Marquis. Ingram ready. Get in the air over the first baseman 
Jones had tough play and he can't get to it down the line. It would have been or it was a foul ball. It was a couple of yards foul. Tough play at first base when you're going down. You don't know really where you are going down the line. For Willis here, he's finding a little bit of the sun right there. Maybe the only ball that can be hit now, Brent, in this time of day that is going to present a problem. Willis not with the sunglasses, but then you're not expecting to have to make plays down that first baseline and fight the sun. Now. How is the sky here generally, Rick? We've seen a couple of days in the past couple of days, a very high sky with very few clouds. Just a whisper of clouds today, but a very bright sunshine. Now the count is 2-2 two, two, and 2 out. Stanford 6, Arizona State nothing. Robbins, the catcher, is the batter. Olsen, the shortstop, at third base. Hit on the ground to Listash. Shorthouse, it knocks it down. Comes with a throw to retire Stanford, but they score again. And that one run makes it 6 nothing. And when we come back, it'll be the ninth hitter in the Arizona State order, Mike Barola. Then we'll move back to the top of the lineup, Liz Hatch and Finn. Stanford 6 and Arizona State nothing. And let's check in with John Dockery. Doc? Thank you, Brent. I'm sitting here in the stands, and of course, you've said it already that the College World Series is a tradition here in Omaha. Fans like Eleanor Buss has been here, have been here for a quarter of a century and keeping score too. What do you have there, Eleanor? Well, I have the scorecard from an ASU game in 1978. 1978. Boy, look at some of the players. Yubi Brooks, Bob Horner, Chris Bando. Not a bad lineup. Eleanor, let me ask you this. What makes you come back year in and year out? Well, I like baseball to begin with, and then I like the enthusiasm and the spirit of the college players. Um, and then I like to see uh, these players that go through here and then go on and play up in the, in the major leagues. I could go down through my books and find just dozens of players that are playing in the American National League now that I saw here in the College World Series. And what do you have here? You have something else here, Eleanor. What is this? Well, in about 1975 or 76, Brett, Mer Brett Musburger, excuse me, uh, interviewed me along with some others, uh, and then I got his autograph afterward. And Brent, that is your autograph. Yes, Brent. <laughs> Back to you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Doc. That ought to be worth all of, uh, I don't know. Rick, what's your autograph worth now on your rookie baseball card? Well, it's not, City, it's, it's not worth that much uh, right now, Brent. Hold on to it for a few more years. It'll be worth hardly anything. Yeah, some great fans here in Omaha. This is Mike Barola. No ball is one strike, and he swings and misses. He's the ninth hitter and the center fielder. I want to clarify something. The NCAA has pointed out to me that USC has won five in a row in back-to-back. -back. Stanford attempted to become the first team since that. Before this format was used, before they had a college World Series, they played with four teams, and Texas did back up titles. That was in 49 and 50, and then they played in Wichita. Ball hit high in the air into center field. And one away. DeGroe makes the put out, and we move to the top of the lineup. So technically speaking, Texas has won back-to-back -back championships, USC, and the Stanford would be the third, but only the second when we consider the format that is used here in Omaha with the College World Series. This is Listash, the shortstop. One for one, he singled and was knocked down on a force play at second base. What's your feeling about Spencer here, Rick? Will they get to him? Is a ground ball hit to Paulson? Backhand on a strong throw, and he's out at first on a close play. Well, Spencer just keeps doing the things that obviously Stanford would like him to do is to keep them very close early in the ball game. And how you do that is with plays like this. Another nice backhand stop by Troy Paulson at shortstop. And a strong throw over, Brent, is that he has shown us all during this College World Series the ability not only to go in the hole and collect himself and receiving the ball and throwing it as three pieces. Catch it, set, and throw. John Finn moving in. Two out, six nothing. Stanford leading Arizona State. We're in the top of the third. This is only a freshman, a check swing foul ball. Stanford has scored six runs on seven hits. They have committed the game's only error. And Spencer, a freshman, has held the Sun Devils to two hits. And the big blow in the game was Sprague's two run homer in the bottom of the first inning. And then they scored one run in the bottom of the second. Spencer ready. Fastball on the 
can. One out. Paulson has to go down. He thought the ball would come up, and he's safe at first. Then hustling down the line, beat it out. But Rick, it appeared to me as though Paulson thought the ball was going to take a higher bounce, and it did not. He was playing it off the swing of the bat, and here's another example of what might happen with an aluminum bat versus wood. If Paulson just kind of held up, but then again, Jubrin is trying to make the adjustment to looking into the shirt sleeve crowd here. I tell you, the ball fielded a little bit deep between his feet, and for the quick fin, if you just don't get it and go right away, he's going to beat it out. Before moving to third base, he was the Sun Devil's center fielder. It's a good lead, two out, and the batter is Higgins, who was a strikeout victim back in the first inning. You get the feeling, Rick, that if Arizona State could score run number one, they'd kind of break through here. And for Stanford, just constantly trying to close the door on them. They played aggressive baseball all year long, and that's the way that Mark Marquis goes ahead and coaches. A very aggressive coach indeed. And it's been pretty good success. Finished either first or second of Pac Kim Southern Division the last eight years. Um, wow. We talk about Johnson, the Stanford left fielder, also playing quarterback. During the early part of the spring, when Coach Jack Elway was holding his spring practices. Well, Johnson would actually go out and scrimmage on a Saturday and then come over and play in a baseball game in the late afternoon. No balls, two strikes. High. That's fastball, ball, and two strikes. Bo Jackson, two sports star out of Auburn. And one of the originals would have been Mark Marquis. He was a defensive back with the Cardinal and he played on the baseball team. Came here as a player. There's a drive down the line in left field. This could be trouble. And Johnson hustling over. Finn will be held at third base. That time the ball did not get to the wall and take a crazy bounce. As Higgins pulls up with a double at second. And Arizona State again threatening. Goes the other way with it very well. And as the outfielder, when it's hit down that line, we've already seen one bounce. It came back very unexpectedly. And he Goes down, makes a good play on it. They hold Finn, but for Spencer, that's 38 strikes on that pitch that he's thrown versus 29 or 38 pitches. 29 of those have been for strikes. So indeed, not falling behind the hitters here in the early going. Now it is Steve Willis in a big moment for Arizona State. Two out, runners on at second and third. They're down by six. Breaking ball. Stayed a little too high for Bible to call it a strike. State has been able to pick up some locations with runners on at second base and signal the hitters. There's a strike. One and one. How does that work, Rick, with the runner at second base and the hitter? How do they relay that in time to help you? The runner will just simply try and look into the catcher's side, and they'll normally slap the inside or outside. The runner will attempt to either point inside or out to the hitter, but sometimes they'll cross you up. Stays up high tries to hold up on his swing and the first base umpire says he did not go around. Two balls and one strike. And there was a discussion in other night's game that uh, with Arizona State the runner at second base it was time called out because they were relaying the signs for the second. Go ahead and try and change the sequence and especially with runners in scoring position. For Stanford though they would like to close the door here on Arizona State. Nobody sitting in either dugout. Spencer now steps back away as Finn bluffs down the line and then takes a step back to third. Higgins the runner at second. Two out. The count is two balls and one strike. Hit in the air and playable. Fair territory and the first baseman. Whitmire makes the put out to retire Arizona State. Again, they leave a runner stranded at third. And through two and a half, they're still being shut out by Stanford, six to nothing. Stanford leading Arizona State at six to nothing. And those of you who follow college baseball certainly turn to Baseball America. They again put out their All-American team. Jim Campanis, the grandson of the former Dodger general manager, is the catcher. Kevin Higgins, who's playing in this game. Robin Ventura from Oklahoma State. Mark Marquis hopes he'll be a member of the United States Olympic team. 
That's how the infield looks on the All-American team. Now in the outfield, Mike Fiore, who made a fabulous catch here at the World Series, is out there. And the player of the year, the pitcher, the designated hitter from Washington State, John Olerud. And the rest of the pitchers include Andy Bennis, the top player picked in this year's draft. He shut Arizona State out in the regional one to nothing. And then Greg Olson, who was here and made an announcement today that he has signed with the Baltimore Orioles, but he will go with the Olympic team to Korea. Those tryouts coming up in Tennessee, and not only will they go to Korea, they're going to tour Japan, Taiwan, Cuba, Canada, and Italy. Seven weeks on the road for Mark Marcus. Hope he's got somebody to do the laundry. Here's the pitch. There's a ball on the outside. Marcus will not even get home. They're going to get on a plane and go to the tryouts right away. Right. They're going to be leaving in a hurry. They're going to take a great group of young men, but they're going to be out of the country, as they were saying, for a seven-week period. So, indeed, a long, long trip, but a great experience for all of them. Kind of two balls. Rick, what's the difference in the baseball that is being used here at the World Series? Using a little different baseball than what they normally use, and the pitchers love it. They've gone to the Wilson ball, which is a little bit softer ball that they're talking about, but what the pitchers like are big seams. We've seen a lot more breaking balls, and the pitchers have liked it because, especially here in Omaha, the weather that they've had is really conducive to getting a good grip on a ball, especially for that hook. So with the seam, they can apply that pressure and get that ball to dip a little bit more for them. The count goes to three and one here. On Whitmire, the leadoff hitter for Stanford, he'll be followed by Johnson and Griffin. Stanford leads at six nothing. Makes a pitch down low. A hitter you want to be careful with. Now it's Brian Johnson, the left fielder. Part of the great crowd here at Omaha. They have supported this college World Series so well through the years. They've added those bleachers out behind the left field fence. Actually, those were the seats over behind the first base dugout. And then they installed permanent seats there prior to this year's World Series. Crowds up around. 15, 16, 17,000 for each of these sessions here. There's that breaking ball on the outside corner for a strike. Whitmire at first, Johnson the hitter, and Tim Griffin do up next. Lindsey Ingram, the third Arizona State pitcher used in this game. Throw over to first closer than you might have expected. I think they just Whitmire about had Whitmire leaning towards second base, so a very good pickoff. Now, here you see, now watch it just start to go a little bit with Ingram, a very good pickoff move over there, so now we'll keep an eye on Whitmire to see if, in fact, he might be going. Another throw over. Out. They thought he was going, but he was not. Pitch outs are called from the Arizona State dugout, as they are from the Stanford dugout. One of the differences here is that Whitmire is looking directly into the Cardinal dugout for signs. Mark Marquis does not relay signs to the third base coach. He prefers to communicate directly. He thinks it's easier to prevent detection that way. Get in the air, deep to center field, but playable. And now, after misplaying it and coming in to make the put out is Barola. Barola thought the wind was going to carry the ball a little bit deeper to center field, but then there was maybe a little lull as far as the wind for the first time this afternoon. He's going back, and the sun is beginning to maybe be a factor on the infield. Not so much on the outfield as of yet, but that wind just continues to blow just about second base down to that left field foul pole. One out, and it's Tim Griffin, the designated hitter for Stanford. One of the differences with the DH rule is the fact that some of the pitchers in college baseball, there's another pitch out as they think Whitmire's going. Some of the pitchers are excellent hitters, 
as many of you know. So not only do they pitch, but they're listed as a DH. If they are taken out of the game as a pitcher, they can still stay in as a designated hitter, but they cannot return and become a position player. And that's not the case here in today's championship game. And again, the throw over, and Whitmire dives back in. Whitmire a couple of times has had a little bit bigger lead on that last pickoff attempt. He was off the bat a little bit more, and then the other time that we saw him almost start to go towards second, Ingram almost picked him off on that instance. That first base umpire, Dale Williams, was the first base umpire during one of the greatest pickoff plays in the history of the College World Series. That was the great Miami Hurricane play. We've got that available, and we'll attempt to show it to you here later this afternoon. A bit line drive down to the corner in left field. Whitmire being sent on in, and he will score standing up on the double. It is Stanford seven and Arizona State nothing. smile in that Stanford dugout. Griffin has very good power when he gets a ball like that, a hanging curveball that he can handle, drives down the left field line, and Whitmire comes all the way around to score as he's off and running on the pitch, and for Stanford, it's a situation where they would like nothing better than to close the door right here and just really make a point early in the game. Eric DeGroe moving in. He is 0 for 1. He did not start the game in center field in the top of the first, but he came in as a hitter in the bottom of the inning after Arizona State changed from Kilgo, the left-hander, to Minor, the right-hander. This is Linty Ingram. He is the third Sun Devil pitcher being used in this game, and he puts that one on the outside corner for a strike, and it's no balls and two strikes with one out, and Griffin, who doubled, leading away at second base. Three extra base hits for the Cardinals so far. Two doubles and Sprague's home run. Foul back away. Coming up next after this championship is decided here in Omaha, we'll be taking you to the third round of the Westchester Classic. The leaders are not yet out on the course. This is a warm up for the U.S. Open. Ingram checks the runner, bouncing ball. Spear keeps it in front of him. He's an active catcher. Spear's moving that target around, too. We saw the breaking ball there that he was giving the low target for. The pitch before that they got the strike on, DeGraw was asking for the fastball up in the strike zone. The pitch check swing, a high hopper, Liz Tash. The shortstop, throw across, and he got him for the second out. But moving on to third is Tim Griffin. You waste any time at all with DeGraw going down that baseline. You're just not going to be able to make the play. First dash coming in makes a nice play, but DeGraw gets down that line in a hurry. The Stanford production here in this game. They've sent 18 batters to the plate. And 10 of them have gotten on base so far against the Arizona State pitching staff. This is a big day for the Pac-10, or if you want to call it the Pac-10 South, the six-pack as it's referred to during the baseball season. That's California, USC, UCLA, Arizona, and the two teams playing here this afternoon. And that one gets away from Spear, and Stafford will score again, and they take the lead 8-0. down in the dirt. Now watch Spear. Now the ball will be in the dirt itself. He goes down to get it, but it stays down. The ball never comes up. Doesn't get the glove down. Goes underneath. And Stanford takes an eight-run lead in the bottom of the third inning. There's a good breaking ball. And this is the first time that two teams from the same conference have ever played for the National Baseball Championship. And that's something we had two from the same conference play for the basketball title, too. For the Big Eight, it was Oklahoma and Kansas in that great game. And here, Stanford leading Arizona State eight to nothing. This is 
quite a reversal from last night's game, Arizona State, Rick. Swung on and missed, but two more runs across the plate for Stanford. It's uphill now for Arizona State. They trail at eight to nothing. They'll send up five, six, and seven in their batting order. Rumsey, Peralta, and Spear. I mentioned the great Miami pickoff play. Coach Ron Frazier had practiced it not only with his players, but also the student body. It was a World Series game against Wichita State. Watch the reaction of the first baseman, the players. They all point down in toward the bullpen. The Wichita State runner runs to second. The pitcher never threw the ball to first. And look at the bench. They are all part of this ruse. And even the umpire Williams, he was not too sure what was going on. It was legal. He was not up on the rubber. And a very embarrassed runner. An easy out at second base. So one of the great trick plays and moments here at the College Baseball World Series in Omaha. Ron Frazier of Miami were eliminated earlier in this competition. Traditionally one of the baseball powers, the Hurricanes. They have left their entertainer, the Miami Maniac, behind. And he has done a great job, especially with the little children here. Sort of like the Philly Fanatic. The mascot of the uh, Hurricanes, Foul Bull. We're in the top of the fourth inning now. Stanford eight, Arizona State nothing. And in each of the first three innings, Spencer has retired the Sun Devils with a runner on at third base. So he has been tough in the clutch here so far. Only a freshman. Marcus telling us that he has been surprised about how this young man has matured. Last year it was a senior who won the championship, sweeping, breaking ball outside. That was Jack McDowell, who now is in the rotation with the Chicago White Sox. And here today they will attempt to win back-to-back -back titles against Jim Brock, who has won two championships and finished second three other times with a freshman from Vancouver, Washington. Inside. Two balls and a strike. He struck Rumsey out back in the second inning. He has struck out two hitters, and he has not walked anyone. Oh, and had a good indication of just how effective he's been. Not only getting him out, but his ball strike ratio has been absolutely outstanding. Here's the count 2-2. Two, two. Scouting report is he'll come back in the count. When you expect him to go to the fastball, he'll come with the breaking pitch and throw a strike. And this has to be a great moment for a freshman. Actually, a great moment for anyone to be on the brink of winning a national championship. Foul ball. Count stays at 2-2. Who were some of your teammates on that Arizona State team that won it in 65, Rick? We had a couple of that went on to the, the major league. Sal Bando at third base. Duffy Dyer behind the plate. And just a truly gutty performance by Doug Nuremberg. And, of course, we were led by none other than Bobby Winkles with the coach at Arizona State back in 65. He started the great tradition. Brock has carried it on. Another foul ball down the first baseline. Is there anyone on this Arizona State team now who is a can't miss prospect through the years? We, we certainly remember that with Arizona State. Jim Brock was telling his friend is that they don't have any truly outstanding players. I mean, the type that you look at and say, oh my goodness, what a type player. But they have players that are very high caliber, as does Stanford have. But they have some players that are young that need to develop and have the potential of being very good. Ball's hit deep to right field over Carey's head. And Rumsey leads off the fourth. He'll go on to third base. With nobody out, the Sun Devils put a runner at third, and he stumbled past it. It is lucky for Rumsey that the throw was not there because he stumbled coming into the bag, and they might have been able to tag him out. Take a look at it, right? Rumsey won four games with home runs during the season and their final at bat gets a very good ball to drive here. A little confusion in the outfield. Two outfielders overrunning the ball. They go after it, drop it, pick it up. And for Rumsey, how difficult is it to stop? Well, you almost want to throw out the hanger, the anchor, so you can get to third base. Here you see the ball off the wall. Both outfielders overran the ball. They finally get it. It's bobbled, but for Rumsey, a chance for Arizona State to maybe finally get on the board. Martin Peralta, the designated hitter, moves in. He grounded out 6-3. He takes a ball here. They trail it by eight runs. Very capable of exploding. They came through with 19 last night against Wichita State, and their ace back. Spencer Reddy swung on and missed after breaking out of the strike zone, and that's a ball on the strike. 
Spencer has been tough with men on. Hit on the ground to Sprague, bounces off his chest, and Arizona State will score for the first time. A smash on Sprague's chest at third base. Clumsy dashing home. Peralta for the big guy for this Arizona State lineup, and watch the hop that Sprague gets. It comes up, and it's almost do or die. Really no play for Sprague at third. But Rumsey, well, he continues on, and finally get on the board for Arizona State and for Stanford. Brent, they are not going to take any chances as they're starting to get some action now. Now that's an error on Sprague, the third baseman. No RBI is given Peralta. He's on at first. Here's Tim Spear. It's eight to one. Stanford. Hit in the air to the infield and playable. Backing up his pulse in the shortstop, shading his eyes, and he makes the put out in short, shallow center field. That's a tough error for X Sprague to get down at third base. And right now, we talked about maybe the sun becoming a factor to the infielders as they go back here. You see Paulson shading his eyes with that sun. The high pop ups now to the infield are going to start becoming a problem. Ricky Candelari, the Sun Devils left fielder, rounded out in the second inning. Hit on the ground to the shortstop. The throw to second. Carey with the relay, not in time at first. So Candelari is on on the fielder's choice. And the number nine hitter, Mike Barola, steps in. He flied out to center field for the third inning. taking any chance Brian Kaiser up in the Stanford bullpen down the left field line the big right hander starts to get loose this is it for the championship everybody available now if you can just give one out that strike on the outside corner makes it one long below just continuing to get very good movement on that fastball moving the ball around showing the curveball from time to time but this young man has just really been ahead of the hitters up high against the number nine hitter he might prefer to stick with the fastball he's got two balls and two strikes with two out Candelari the left fielder on at first State breaks through with their first run of the game. They trail Stanford eight to one. And we'll come back in the bottom of the fourth inning. And do up for the Stanford Cardinal. The hitters two, three, and four. Paulson, Sprague, and Paul Carey. It never rains on championship Saturday in Omaha. Right, John Dockery? It never rains, Brent. And I'm with Greg Olson. You already announced the All-American pitcher from Auburn first round draft pick of the Baltimore Orioles has signed a contract. Does that mean you can't go to the Olympics? What's happening? Well, I'm leaving for the Olympics, uh, Olympic tryouts tomorrow at one o'clock. So I'm headed there and there's no problem. Uh, the Orioles said it was fine if I went. So it wasn't an issue in the negotiations? Well, it was an issue. They uh, offered me uh, a contract with the Olympics and without the Olympics. So either way, I'm in good shape. What did the Orioles tell you about your future with their organization? When might you come up? They said I could be up, you know, if I had a good summer at the end of the at the end of the year in September. Uh, next year they said, you know, I'm gonna have to work and come out of spring training on my own and try to get up there by myself. Brent, you remember Greg Olson from those Pan American games. Now back to you. Sure do, and from a trip down to Havana too. I watched him pitch against the Cubans down there. Doc, tell him that the Orioles needed him back in April. Here's the pitch now to Paulson up high. 
One ball and two strikes the count. Troy Paulson, the Stanford shortstop, leading off the bottom of the fourth inning in the Cardinal, head of Arizona State, eight to one. Sun Devil breakthrough for the first time in the fourth inning on the freshman right hander. There's a ground ball toward the second baseman. Higgins has it. Yeah. Well, Rick, USC has dominated with 11 championships. Arizona State next at five, and there are the Longhorns of Texas. With it's amazing when you look at what USC has been able to do, almost dominated this entire College World Series for a number of years consecutively, but Pac-10 division right now, and that conference itself extremely well represented here in the College World Series this year. What convinced you to go to Arizona State when Winkles was putting that program together? Actually, I came close to signing with the Dodgers. Tom Lasorda was trying to sign me at that particular time, and strange as it may see, it was really through the Pittsburgh Pirate organization that I was introduced to Coach Bobby Winkles and decided to go to Arizona State. And one of the fine decisions that I made, maybe one of the few fine decisions. One ball and two strikes the count here on Sprague. He homered for Stanford in the first inning, then he was a strikeout victim later. He's been busy at third base, hasn't he? There's a ground ball. Ingram reaches back for it. Nice play by the pitcher. Paul Carey moves in. Single and a sacrifice fly. Ringham bounced around that mound very well. Gets the backhand play. Turns around and gives Sprague. And has done an excellent job with his baseball program at Stanford. Paul Carey, I, I asked him, isn't it tough to recruit at Stanford with its high academic standards? And he said, well, it can be, but it also works to our advantage because there are a lot of parents who want a quality education and you get a chance to come and play baseball and study at Stanford and it works out. There's a strike on the outside. Corner. One ball and one strike on Carey with two out. It was interesting also about his call to note that he said, you know, if you play a one game championship, the one team you don't want to meet is Arizona State. Might have changed his mind a lot about now with an eight to one lead in the fourth inning, but the Sun Devils are still very dangerous. Well, they had had so much problems, Stanford did, in trying to beat Arizona State during the regular season that they had faced one another. And while he did say that they would not want to play Arizona State, he had a little smile on his face shortly thereafter. And for the first time, Stanford goes in order. Now one, two, three in the bottom of the fourth. And now Arizona State will move back to the top of the batting order in the top of the fifth. Liz Tatch will lead it off for him. He'll be followed by John Finn and Kevin Higgins. Well, Arizona State coach Jim Brock remembers well the year 1976. He had swept the University of Arizona all season, six times. He came to the College World Series, and he was beaten in a key game and wound up finishing third. This year, he beat Stanford five of six times. Now he finds himself battling uphill. We're in the fifth inning, and Brock's Sun Devils are down 8-1. This is the 17th year that he has coached this baseball program. He's won more than 700 games. He got to 500 faster than any coach in the history of the business. And he runs a very high-class program down there. Liz Tash, Finn and Higgins, top of the lineup. Swung on a miss on the high fastball, and it's a ball and a strike. Rick, your feeling about uh, Stan Spencer and how far he can go here for Stanford? So far, he has looked very, very strong, although we did see a little action down in that Stanford bullpen the previous inning. For Arizona State, at the top of the order here in the fifth inning, they would like to get something going. And a little strange now in college baseball to maybe look over that Arizona State dugout and not see the proverbial rally hat. As we spoke with Jim Brock the other day, he says, hey, I don't allow it. He called it a cancer, if you will, in, in college ranks. And you're not going to see the rally hat in that dugout. Check swing, one hop at the second baseman. On the first. Listash is out. 
Bryant hit the bag and he may have been injured because the first base bag is out of the ground totally right now. The first base umpire, Dale Williams, is placing it back in the ground. Here we see Carey going over, but watch Listash at first base. The bag is pulled up, his foot goes down. And with an ankle situation right there, a very scary thing. We'll get another look at it now. Watch the bag, how it goes up, it hits, and just all of a sudden comes up. Get another look at it. Now here's where it starts to come up. Now those bags, we saw one a couple of weeks ago in the big leagues that came up. Second base at Dodgers Stadium, and here I, you can only imagine now, with Listash having come down on top of the bag, somehow it forced the bag to come off of that metal peg that's in the ground. The bag fits over the top of it, a very scary situation. They're checking his knee and his ankle, while home plate umpire John Bible now is checking the bag along with the ground crew. It seemed as though his left foot almost slid across the bag. And when it got to the back of it, the front part tore loose. Well, at first look at it, I thought that maybe Ron Whitmire, the first base, when he caught the ball, had maybe caused the bag to come up. That was not the case. This dash is walking off rather gingerly now, but he appeared to just come down on top of the bag and somehow force the bag out of his position. No, we hope that he is all right. We'll remind you that after this, we've got golf coming up in the third round of the Westchester Classic. A look at the leaderboard after two rounds. So the grounds crew coming back out here to do a little work with that base to make sure that it is anchored down and doesn't come up when a runner hits it like that. Texas leads the way in the number of appearances here at the College World Series with 24. USC has certainly made the most of their 17, followed by the two teams. Arizona State is third, and then Stanford is 11th. This is their seventh appearance. Marcus played in one and has coached in six. Spencer again able to throw strikes. He has not walked. A single hitter here this afternoon. He leads 8 1. We're in the top of the fifth with one out. And he's looking at the Arizona State third baseman, John Finn, who is one for two. Breaking ball outside of low for a ball. And for Spencer to only have thrown 17 balls, 64 pitches so far through four and a third innings. One of the main reasons is Stanford has been able to go on top along with the offense. Strike one one. Finn is a very good bunner. He'll not only drag the ball but push it as well. And at times he will take a pitch. It looks like he's no idea of wanting to really bunt the ball, maybe take a strike. But in fact, if he gets a pitch, he will go either way, first or third with a bunt. Foul. Look at last night's line score in the Arizona State victory over Wichita State. They scored nine runs in the sixth inning and five more in the eighth inning. continues his domination so far during the ball game of Arizona State very low percentage a number of balls that he's thrown and good example of maybe the addition of a inch or two to the outside part of the plate here in the College World Series struck out four and walked no one and this is second baseman Kevin Higgins his one hit a double to left field he was left stranded at second base He'd had 
been difficult to guess against Spencer. He has mixed up the fastball. There's one right at Carey. One, two, three. They knock down the top of the Arizona State batting order here in the fifth inning. And we'll be back right after this message and a word from your local station. That is the Miami Hurricane Maniac, and no, that is not Jimmy Johnson in disguise. That is John Routh, the soft-spoken South Carolinian, who does a great job entertaining the fans, not only down in Miami, but he said that, who does he think he is, Benjamin Franklin? It's a whole new meaning to go fly a kayak. Just also wondering, Brett, we were <laughs> speculating whether that was really John Dockery in that <laughs> Maniac uniform. Well, here it is, Stanford 8. Arizona State one. We're in the bottom of the fifth inning. Liz Statue was shaken up, has gone back to play shortstop for Arizona State. And catcher Doug Robbins leads it off with a drive deep to right field. And back to the warning track to make the put out is Rumsey. Robbins showing some pretty good pop in that bat. So inning Runs you back a long way with that crosswind. Makes it even more noticeable as to the distance. But that ball will travel. They get another shot of Rumsey going back. Playing with that wind and also the sun, while it's not a factor now at right field, will just continue as the game progresses here this afternoon. First baseman Ron Whitmire steps in. One on the outside corner. Speaking of sun, right center field in Wrigley Field must have offered you some moments through the years. That could be a tough sun field. And it also showed itself here in some of the four o'clock games that they were playing the College World Series. There were a lot of right fielders who were absolutely losing the ball. And just the other night, while we were watching the game down the first baseline, it was also difficult for us to see home plate there for a while. Count is two balls and a strike. Lindsey Ingram is the third Arizona State pitcher. Jim Brock opened with left-hander Rusky Kilgo. He could not last through the first inning. And Blast Miner was relieved in the second inning. And Lindsey Ingram has stayed in. Shot down to the corner. This will go for at least two. Whitmire being held at second base with a double. He has had a stroke like that all week long here in Omaha. Stanford just continues to swing the bat very aggressively here this afternoon against Arizona State. Very good fundamental swing by Whitmire. Drives the ball down the left field line. The only question here, will we going to get the same hop out of this corner as Candelari got down the left field corner? Rumsey gets it back in and holds him to a double. Johnson, who along with playing quarterback, is an extremely versatile baseball player. He can catch if they need him. And also play third base. We were talking about Marquis playing baseball football. We cannot overlook Jack Elway's son, John Elway, who was a great baseball player at Stanford and had major league potential. Played that one summer for George Steinbrenner's New York Yankee minor league system. That was a very well-paid summer vacation for John Elway. He's gone on to greater glory and bigger dollars with the Denver Broncos. Ingram checks the runner and pitch to Johnson outside of low. Johnson, a very good-looking ball player. Good mechanics at the plate. Doesn't make a lot of mistakes as far as going after bad pitches in the dirt. And when you watch his stance, Brent, you just have to ask yourself the question is that as he really progresses, will it be football or indeed the sport that he's in now, baseball? Very good looking ball player. It takes one a little high and tight. Two balls and a strike. We're in the bottom of the fifth. Last year's champion Stanford ahead of Arizona State, eight to one. Oh, and outside. Mm. 
smells good all the way up here, right? Sizzling just about like the Cardinal bats here this afternoon. The way Mom made them in the backyard, right? Maybe they'll send a couple of those up. Round ball to Higgins at second. He drops it to throw the first still in time. Johnson is retired, and moving to third is Whitmire. Higgins, a little problem trying to grab the handle as he gets set to throw it over to first base, drops it, but very coolly collects himself, comes up and makes the play. And with Whitmire going over to third base, he aggressively goes through the bag. They continue to look for more runs, Brent, because when he went by third base, he was looking back to home. There's a pitch on the outside corner for a strike to D.H. Tim Griffin. He is one for two, a double, drove in a run, and scored a run. Whitmire, the runner at third base, has scored in each of his two previous at-bats. Single came around, then he walked and came around. He scored his third run of the game. Swung on and missed, and Whitmire goes diving back to third as Spear runs it down. So it's no balls and two strikes. Griffin, a kind of unusual stance. If you can watch his knees when he's in his stance, he keeps his knees very close together. A consistent hitter for him this year. He is the backup second baseman. And has been used as the designated hitter here in Omaha. Up high, but it was a foul tip, caught for a third strike, and Griffin is out. Just nicked the top part of the bat, and was caught by the catcher. We're through five, Stanford leading it 8-1. And in the middle of the order, Willis, Rumsey, and Peralta do up for the Sun Devils. With Rick Mundy, John Dockery, I'm Brett Musburger. We're live from Rosenblatt Stadium, Omaha, Nebraska. This is the College Baseball World Series Championship game, matching last year's winner, Stanford, against Arizona State. And the Cardinal exploded for five runs in the bottom of the first. They have led all the way, and it is now 8-1 to one as we move to the bottom of the sixth inning. The crowd, a championship game crowd for Omaha as a strike is poured in to Eric DeGroe by Linty Ingram. The 16,071, that's a new record for the championship, and their total attendance up over 132,000, also a record for the College World Series. So Omaha continues to support this event in great fashion. One ball and one strike now, the count on DeGroe. Linty Ingram uh, has been fairly impressive right now. Done a very good job, and surprisingly enough, when you look at this Arizona State ball club, the reason that Ingram did not start against the Cardinal was because of not being that effective during the season against them. There's a bloop single and a shallow center field. DeGroe is on with a base hit. Frank Carey do up, and Rick, your impressions of the Stanford second baseman so far this week. Well, you and I both last night were just amazed at what we were able to see him do. He hangs in extremely well on the double play. Certainly, as it is, Coach Mark Marquis enjoys it to see him flashing the signs out. But at second base, to be able to stay in there with those runners bearing down on you in the double play, the pitcher's best friend, it can get you out of a couple of big innings, and it has certainly done that for Stanford in here in the College World Series. An interesting matchup today at two ball clubs that we have looked at that have been right on the verge of elimination quite a number of times in both the regional and here in the College World Series. Swung on a 
miss. Runners going throw through, not in time. A stolen base for Eric DeGroo, the center fielder. DeGroo with a very good jump. Ingram didn't really give him that close of a check at first base for Spear by the time the throw gets down there. We'll get another look at it. Now here's the jump. A very strong jump indeed. He's looking back almost as if it were a hit and run. There you see the throw. Diggins going over, tries to get in front of it. They do keep the ball in front, so the throw cannot go over to third. Round foul, no balls and two strikes to count on Kerry. Ricky probably was given Kerry's ability to handle the bat. He'd made contact in his three previous at times. The way he checked in, I think they were starting in and hoping to get something going here with the hit and run. They lead it 8-1. But when you're playing a team that has exploded for 19 the game before, you're still just a touch uneasy about that lead. Into the second baseman, Higgins, so the stolen base works. And moving on to third base is DeGroo because that was a double play ground ball to Higgins. Carey does his job getting the runner over to scoring position. Over at third base, a lot more ways to score from third than at second base. So Fine job indeed by Carey, who's just a little firecracker of a player. Shortstop Troy Paulson moves in. One for three. That was a single. He has also flied out, grounded out. Breaking ball is outside. One out. The grows on at third. Stanford eight, Arizona State one. Arizona State's playing the infield up in this situation. They want to try and stop this extra run from scoring. So they move the infield up on the grass. Inside corner. Stanford played the second game last evening. And some may have thought that it was a disadvantage to conclude late in the evening and have a quick turnaround, but it has certainly not turned out that way. Two balls and one strike. It's interesting that Jim Brock, prior to, or right after their game, prior to Stanford's game, they asked him how long he would like to see the second game run last night. He says, I hope they play 25 innings. And Paulson attempting to punch one through this pulled in infield. Get the Cardinals still another run. And that one hit in the air behind first base, and it'll go into the third or fourth row. One of the reasons why they use a baseball that is a little bit harder than the one employed by the major leaguers is for economic reasons. Baseball in a college game, once it gets older and scuffed, is used in practice. In a major league park, it goes as a souvenir. A little bit higher seam ball, NCAA on the label, high and fast. And a count now goes three balls and two strikes on Pulse. He had a good look at Spear then, gave the sign or the target just way up and inside. Pulse and try and get the ball up and in on him. Side part of the play. Fouls another one away. In case you just joined us, Stanford took command in the first inning. Third baseman Ed Spray crushed a two run homer. They added three more to take a five nothing lead. They scored in each of the first three innings. All right, they were ahead eight to nothing before Arizona State broke through in the fourth inning, and that's where we stand now. Eight one. Stanford leading. There's a base hit. Make it 9 1. Paulson single scores to Earl. His final game can be such an emotional one, and for Stanford, they are just kind of peaking their emotions now. Arizona State trying to battle to try and get at least back in the ballgame. Some sight of 
closing down the distance on that scoreboard right now but Stanford has done an excellent job so far in putting runners on base and then advancing them over to scoring position. Ed Sprague who homered in the first. Takes a strike. Looking back at Coach Marcus. in off the plate and the ball just starts digging in as far as continuing to go inside to Sprague looks like it gets him right on the hand there you see the target is up and in but the ball just keeps tailing away by the time Sprague can get out of the way he's already been plunked with it. One of the dangers of being hit on the hand when your hand is still on that bat a lot of times there is nothing to give except Maybe the bones itself Alfredo Griffin just about a week and a half two weeks ago hit on the hand by Dwight Gooden fastball broken hand here and for a young man with a bright bright future ahead of him they're going to check Ed Sprague out down there right now and that is a big big concern with hand injuries and you don't really know how it's going to be Brent for maybe another five or ten minutes or even another hour or so. Stepping in now is Paul Carey. He was the player of last year's College World Series. Hit a big grand slam home run early in the competition. He talked about the pressure of coming back. I came into the season coming off an MVP season, and there was a lot of pressure on myself from my players and from the coaches. And I had a little trouble with that at the beginning. You know, I struggled a little bit at the beginning. And I had a feeling inside that I was expected to get hit every time up. I was expected to drive him around. So it was a lot of added pressure. He's out of Weymouth, Mass. He was the Massachusetts Player of the Year back in 1986. He was also an all-star hockey player at Boston College High School. And with two aboard and one out, Stanford leading 9-1. And Paul Carey closing in on a dream, and that's to play on back-to-back -back national championship teams. That had the pressure that Kerry was talking about. What he did is that during the season when he ran into some problems, he started learning how to handle that inside pitch even better than what he had in the past. And in last night's ball game, really showed how he's able to stay back on the off speed pitches. That is Gordy Farmer down in the Arizona State bullpen. Strike. And he jumps ahead one ball and two strikes to carry. Paulson leading the way from second. The pitch hit on the ground to Higgins at second. He bottles it. He'll get the hitter carry. And he's had some difficulty picking it up. Here this inning. That's twice he has bobbled ground balls, and again they had a chance, I think, for a double play that time. Ball hit rather slowly down to Higgins at second base. He had ideas of going and trying to turn over the double play for the second time. Had trouble with that ball, and many times you do that because you start anticipating ahead of actually receiving the ball, trying to throw it before you have it. Doug Robbins walked and scored during that five run rally in the first inning for Stanford. Cardinal leading the Sun Devils nine to one. We're in the bottom of the sixth inning. Two out. Hit in the air to center field and deep. Retreating and making the catch is Barilla. But Stanford breaks through for another run. And they are now up 9-1. Arizona State will move up in the seventh inning. It'll be the bottom third of the batting order. Tim Spear, the catcher, will lead it off. Candelari and then Barola when we come back. As we move to the top of the seventh, let's check in again with John Dockery. 
Uh, thank you, Brent. Brent, remember the Final Four? The post office then did what they're doing here today. They're helping to memorialize this event with a special cancellation, which they will place on a series of five cards for $1.20. Now, this may become a rare collectible because right after the game, this stamp will be destroyed, and obviously no more sets will be made. So if you and Rick want a set, you better get your order in, in a hurry. All right, Doc, and so far in the game, Stan Spencer has canceled Arizona State. Six innings, given up only one run on five hits, four strikeouts, and he has yet to walk a hitter. This is Tim Spear leading off. He takes a ball outside. Spencer has really been impressive, hasn't he? He has been impressive not only from the results that he's got, but also the way that he's gone out and the tremendous poise that he has on the mound. Playable in center field. Cabral makes the put out. Candelari, 0 for 2, comes up. That's 10 straight that Spencer has retired. Easier for a pitcher or a hitter to go into professional baseball after playing collegiately. I can, you may have an opportunity as a pitcher to maybe take a little bit more time to develop the skills. I think there are more adjustments to make from a daily situation as a hitter when you go up because in collegiate ball you're facing one or two top pitchers on each ball club. Get into pros or many, many more. Line drive base hit to left field. And that snaps a very impressive pitching streak. And it's the first Arizona State base runner to reach since the fourth inning. The big guy in this Arizona State lineup, Candelari. Strong fundamentals and hitting has been their big RBI man over the season. Center fielder Mike Barola. 0 for 2. Whitmire playing behind the runner at first. The breaking ball in for a strike. Boy, it is hard to read Spencer when he's going to throw that breaking ball, Rick. He doesn't depend on any particular sequence of the count. He'll open you with it. He'll use it 3 1. Comes right back. He struck the roll out on that breaking ball in his last at bat after showing him nothing but fastballs for the first two strikes. And what makes it more difficult as a hitter is that Spencer does not alter his delivery on the fastball or on the breaking ball, which quite frankly a lot of college pitchers will do. Stayed up high, one ball and two strikes. Very poised freshman. Lost an American League championship game last year and prior to the start of that game, of this game was saying that he thinks he learned a valuable lesson from that appearance. Hit the center field. DeBron goes back, shades his eyes, and makes the put out. A lot of room in center field. There you see not only are the glasses down, but you're also trying to shield it with the glove. And at the last second, turning away. If the ball gets right in the sun, really the only thing you can do is try and get off to the side of it. Get a little bit better angle. Use the glove if you can, but if it goes directly in it, put the glove up where you last thought you saw the ball. Liz Tash. Was shaken up and his last at bat when first base came up after he hit it with his left foot. He is one for three today. He singled leading off the game, then was forced at second. And on the bottom of that inning, Stanford exploded for five. Ten again showing its baseball dominance at the College World Series. They've had a great run here the last few years. One ball and one strike. Candelaria away from first, two out. Breaking ball is outside. Arizona 
Arizona State was on the brink of elimination at the hands of Wichita State. Twice with two strikes and two out of the ninth inning, they battled back. Probably as tough a loss as a college team will ever experience. It was difficult yesterday for Wichita State to get back up for the rematch with Arizona State, actually the third time that they had met him. And it wound up being a rough 19-1 Arizona State. Spray picks it up and throws it across. He has been a busy third baseman here today. Arizona State is down in the seventh inning. And coming up for Stanford, they'll come back with the numbers five, six, and seven hitters. We'll be back after this message and a word for your local station. Well, Rick Mundy, uh, I'm sorry your alma mater hasn't been able to score a few more runs here this afternoon. No, but I think if you're looking at the collegiate baseball, Brent, what it really does is bring out the fact that it is truly a great game. It doesn't really matter on the level by which you're playing, and there's so much tradition. Here in Omaha, the College World Series has really been kind of a, a trampoline effect, a, a starting point, if you will, for not only myself, but a lot of other major league ball players, both past and present, and something we finally look back to this experience here in this city. What was it like when you flew into Omaha, your first time back since the 60s the other day? I have to tell you, I flew in on Thursday afternoon, and I was glued to the window of the airplane searching for this particular stadium and I've got to be very honest is that there was a tremendous amount of emotion that went through me thinking back to some outstanding times being with a ball club the friendships that we had on that particular ball club and they stay with you for a lifetime it's not just for one week Ron Whitmire strikes out and that's the first time Rick that he has not reached base here this afternoon so he is out Starting the bottom of the seventh inning for the Stanford Cardinal. Now it is Brian Johnson, the left fielder, and then Tim Griffin, the designated hitter, do up. Johnson doubling back in the first inning and driving in two runs during that five run explosion. Sprague with two RBIs on the home run. Whitmire drove in one with a single, and then Johnson doubled in two more. And Arizona State has not been close since then. Stanford made it 8 0. Before the Sun Devils scored in the fourth, Stanford adding a run at the bottom of the sixth, and here they are on the bottom of the seventh. One out, and nobody on. Linty Ingram, the third Arizona State pitcher, with the breaking ball at 71 miles an hour on that jugs gun measurement. Try to use that to get an idea as to how hard Spencer is still throwing the ball too. He has been extremely impressive for Stanford. He's gone all the way. Again the breaking ball in the 70s. Usually Rick what's the differential in speed between the fastball and the, and the breaking ball. It could be as much as 10 miles an hour somewhere in that area but the big thing that you're looking for is just being able to change speeds anyway. I mean even the fastball be able to change speeds on it itself but there you see the fastball pretty good one at 86 miles an hour seeing the jugs gun being used here Brandon goes back to 65 of course Lewis and Clark threw out the first pitch for that particular series and they were just <laughs> small boys but obviously did not have the radar guns only being used on the highway at the time but back then it was like it sounds like he's throwing hard. Painted that outside corner for strike three. And that's two strikeouts here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Well, we saw how fast the fastball was, the pitch before 86, but here is outstanding location. Ingram getting the strikeout. And now it's Tim Griffin, the DH. He drove in a run and scored after doubling. That was in the third inning. State. A team that had beaten them five of the six times they played during the regular season. And that's the beauty of the one game and out. You never know. Good moment for that man, Mark Marcus, who coached the United States Olympic team and is moving nearer and nearer to back to back NCAA championships. 
And his job right now is to not let his ball club take anything for granted at all. He knows on the other side of the field that Arizona State Ball Club has been able to score some runs, and the frustration is just starting to mount even more for Arizona State with their hopes maybe starting to dim here. Right past him, he struck out the side. An impressive inning for Ingram here in the seventh. Knocks him down one, two, three. So they'll come to the eighth, and they'll have John Finn leading off. He will be followed by Kevin Higgins and then Steve Willis when we return. Uh, here are some umpires who are not too concerned about the Bach rule. Go to it, Miami Maniac. All oh, the flavor of college baseball. <laughs> Richie Phillips, eat your heart out. <laughs> <laughs> now, those are my kind of umpires. That's great. I tell you, they just won the hearts of every single person in this stadium. Well, the first time I came here in the mid 70s, I caught a spreaker. Now, today, I get boogie and umpires. Can't beat fun at the College oh, World Series in Omaha. Here is John Finn now. Top of the order. This young man has really done a job here this afternoon against the Sun Devils. Up a little high with the breaking ball that time. Finn has reached base two of the three times he's batted and struck out. Pitch up high. Two balls and no strikes. Spencer has not walked anyone yet. for Tommy John with that great sinker ball. There's the breaking pitch. So the fastball was at 85 and the breaking ball 77. Spencer will not be 19 years old until August 7th. Was he worried about fresh pressure in this game, pitching the title game for Stanford? Well, here's what he had to say. I, I pitched in um, the championship game last year before. I think, um, I guess I, I didn't do real well in the American Legion National Championship game um, last year. I kind of, I looked to that um, as a chance to kind of, you know, redeem myself. Kind of, um, last year, I, I had a real rough time in the championship game at, at that tournament. Um, so this year I'm looking you know, for a chance to you know, show that I, that I can pitch a big game. He is showing that, but he has fallen behind in the count. One ball and no strikes. Later is second baseman Kevin Higgins. On the top of the eighth, 9-1 Stanford leading. There's the strike. And Steve Shitron, the top relief pitcher for Stanford, up and loosening down the left field line. Line to right field, and it falls in for a base. 
base hit. Finn moves on to third as Higgins singles. And the first two hitters here in the eighth are on base for Arizona State. They're keeping a close eye on Spencer now. 17 starts that he had during the season, only four complete games, and we've seen here in the eighth. To the leadoff hitter in this inning, Finn, he fell behind two balls and no strikes with a fastball up, and the location has not been that great, and certainly wasn't with a curveball out over the plate there to Higgins. He gets the base hit. And for Mark Marquis, he's going to be watching Spencer very, very closely now and see if he's not tiring. But up to this point, truly amazing job this young man has done. Rick, one of the keys has been the ability of Spencer to stop Steve Willis. Willis, the cleanup hitter for the Sun Devils, 0 for 3, and he has left three men in scoring position as the conference goes on. Out at the mound here in the eighth inning with Shitron continuing to warm up. Now, Shitron was used last night in that win over Cal State Fullerton, which advanced Stanford into this championship game. Both Stanford and Arizona State have had to come through the losing bracket. In fact, the Sun Devils lost their opener in the regional to Evansville one to nothing. Then they came through Oklahoma, UNLV, swept Pepperdine. And at the World Series after Wichita State beat them, they had to beat Florida and Wichita State twice to get into this title match. And for Stanford, it's been much the same way, the hard way. I saw Spencer talking to himself just a little bit after pitching coach Dutton went back to the dugout. And here's where we have to be careful. If you go out and you ask a young man how he feels, the adrenaline level is so high, he'll tell you he feels extremely well. Attempted pick off the bluff. Looking for the runner to stray too far from first as he wheels around, which is a legal play. It's interesting the Bach rule is written that you're not supposed to deceive a runner. I don't know what that particular play is, but uh, some inconsistencies, I guess, in the rules from time to time. High pitch hit deep to left field. Way back. It's out of here. Steve Willis blasts a three run home run for Arizona State. Signifies how frustrating it's been. You see Finn pleading with the ball to go out of the ballpark. Dan Rumsey, the right fielder, stepping in with Stanford's lead reduced to a five run margin, 9 4. And the pitch is inside for the ball. At the top of the show, we mentioned that. Jim Brock had said this ball club of his here in 88 does have the ability to come back and score runs late in the ball game, and Stanford is a ball club that knows that maybe all too well here. This one hit in the air over the second baseman's head for a single. Now it's Martin Peralta, the designated hitter, due up, and Marquis will have to think about making a change. Gets the pitch that he can handle, and that ball is on the inner part of the plate. Fights it off, but Rumsey just lays it in a perfect spot just over the second base, and they've seen just about enough. So Steve Shiptron will be coming in from the Stanford bullpen here in the eighth inning. It's 9 4 Stanford ahead with Arizona State rallying. Steve Shiftrud on to pitch for the Stanford Cardinal here in the eighth inning. 
as the Sun Devils explode for three runs. Coach Mark Marquis talked about his relief stopper. Chitron uh, gives me gray hairs, to be honest with you. And Chitron's the guy that uh, if there's nobody on base, he'll walk to just to make me nervous. I think that's what he really tries to do. He tries to drive me crazy. But he, he is our ace out of the bullpen. And he's, uh, I feel much more comfortable if there's two guys on base and I'm bringing them in. Then he won't walk one or two. He'll get them out. <laughs> well, he has one man on base here with Peralta due up. And we'll see how Shipman's control here is this afternoon. He was pretty impressive last night, I thought. But he has a man on base, and as Mark was saying, he drives him nuts when there's nobody on. But one of the top relievers in college baseball, leading the Pac-10 with nine saves, 10 overall here at 88. Now with a score nine four in the count, one ball and no strikes, will Brock make him throw a strike, Rick? Well, without question, Arizona State also knows that Chitron has driven Stanford nuts at times. He's been extremely effective, but line drive double play. I was going to say you would like for him to throw strikes, but then again, when Chitron comes in with a man on base and you can get him to hit the ball hard at someone, well, it's good for one side of the field and for the other. Well, the frustration just continues to mount with time running out. That a big play in this championship game. It was 9 4, runner on at first. The ball was extremely well hit. Had it been another foot right or left, it would have gone on into the outfield for a base hit. He did not go around. Batter is Tim Spear. He tripled for the Sun Devils earlier, and he has flied out each of his last two at bats. Get an idea of how hard Chitron is throwing. Over 90 miles an hour and hit deep to center field. To grow goes back and makes a beautiful catch, crashing into the wall and holds on. Nice play by the Cardinal center fielder. Here it is, Rick. Just a tremendous swing. That's only part of a great play. DeGraw out in center field. Well, one of the reasons that Stanford believes he's one of the best center fielders here in the College World Series. A gutsy play goes back, battles the wall, and holds on to the baseball. And he will be coming to bat in the bottom of the eighth inning. Stanford only three outs away from back to back championships. A lot of hard work goes into an event such as this. Let's go down to John Dockery. John. Thank you, Brent. I'm with Dennis Pope, and he's the man responsible for all of this. And the response in Omaha, the enthusiasm is incredible, Dennis. Yet I understand there's been conversations about possibly moving the event from Omaha. Well, there has been just some discussion about that, but I think the uh, most visible element of support has been the number of people here this year and the enthusiasm of the fans and so forth. And uh, that in itself indicates that uh, Omaha is a home of the College World Series, and we look forward to uh, continue our uh, cooperative effort with them. What is the position of the NCAA at this moment on keeping the series and moving it? Well, I don't think our position is what we have to do to keep it here. I think what we need to do now is look at what we can continue to do to improve the situation here in, a, in an effort, joint effort with the city of Omaha. And, and we're very positive and very pleased. It's a, it's a, a civic pride that Omaha has in this event, and uh, uh, the NCAA is proud to be involved with it. Well, thank you, and congratulations. Back to you, Brent. All right, John, thank you. Eric DeGraw, the hitter, with a count of one ball and one strike. He's the junior from Anaheim who just made that superb catch in center field. And he showed exactly why Stanford went ahead and maybe made that switch early in the ball game to get the defense into the game with that big center field and that wind blowing out and certainly able to cash in on that strategy in the eighth inning. Base hit for DeGraw. Bottom of the eighth inning with Stanford leading Arizona State 9-4. Now it's the top of the order, Frank Carey, and you cannot overstate how important that line drive that Carey picked off to start that double play in the top of the inning might have been. Arizona State making its biggest move of the game. And he was right there in the middle of another double play as Ingram throws on over to first base and draws easily in. 
Nine runs on 12 hits for Stanford. That's the most they have made in any single game here in the College World Series. We talked about Arizona State coming here the hard way. Stanford lost its Northeast Regional opener to St. John's and then came back to beat Kentucky twice in a row. Then here at the World Series, they were beaten by Cal State Fullerton before rallying and knocking off the Titans last night in the semifinal. Back to a situation now where they are holding the runner at first base. DeGraw can run, and Stanford has already seen the explosiveness that Arizona State has. They would like to be able to pick up another run right here. Pitch out. And at the conclusion of this championship game, we'll send you for the third round coverage of the Westchester Classic. Glance at the leaderboard. They are out on the course, so you'll be seeing them as they play the back nine. One ball and one strike. Big lead, he's going. There's the pitch out. Spear throws through. Let me see it. Yes, he said, let me see it. And then it was there. Made the tag. So DeGraw out stealing. Strong throw by Spear. There you see the pitch out. DeGraw is off and running, but watch the throw and the tag. Here we see coming out of the chute, real good mechanics and getting rid of the ball. Here we'll see the ball. He goes right into it. You heard the umpire say, let me see it to see if the ball's still in the glove. Two balls and two strikes. The count now on Kerry. for Arizona State trailing it by five right outside three and two Ingram the third Arizona State pitcher has been the most impressive hit five. coming out of the bullpen here this afternoon. Shortstop Troy Paulson takes one outside the low. Both his hits were singles. Liz Tatch cannot pick it out at first base on the bounce. It was not a good throw and Paulson is on. Tough play for Willis at first base so the ball into the dirt here you see he sets up pretty well in the ball did look in the glove as if maybe the ball was getting away the low throw that Willis has in the glove and just can't climb up with it now watch you look back into the glove to get a second pump on the ball. Here's the low throw over to Willis he almost has a chance to get it the ball just skirts away. Ed Sprague steps in. Pitch outside. Rick, I should mention that the uh, previous coverage of the College World Series and throughout this decade has really been handled so very well by ESPN, and I thought they did a great job. They were very helpful for us here the last couple of days. We're using many of the same cameramen here this afternoon with our crew, and uh, I'll tell you, they did a great job. It's Stanford 9, Arizona State 4. It's two balls and no strikes with two out. This is Ed Sprague. He was the hero back in the first inning when he smashed the two run homer. He was also hit by a pitch. Hit in the hand in his last at bat by Ingram. They tried to work him high and tight. This ball out of way is hit over the first baseman's head and trouble down the right field line. It falls in and Paulson will go to third. The throw back across to the bluff throw. No one was covering first. 
Pops single to right field by Sprague sends Paulson scampering to third here with two out. No play on the ball for Sprague. He goes with the ball pretty well, hits it off the end of the bat, kind of a dying quail down the line in right field, but very strong throw coming in from Rumsey to third base. So the air gave Stanford a life here. And that air by Listach, only their third of the College World Series and their first since the opening game. Paul Carey ready at the plate, swings and misses on a good breaking ball. Well, even five is a tough number to come back from with only one at bat left. Arizona State. And not like to face a six or a seven here. And the ball's two strikes. If you want to look ahead, it'll be the bottom of the order. Coming up for Arizona State in the ninth. Good block by Spear, but the runner on first break will move along to second. Spear showing just how good and agile he can be behind the plate. And here's the look the catcher gets. Breaking ball down in the dirt. He's got a shift over, which he does in just very good fashion. Able to block the ball, stop the run from scoring. Two two and two out. Catcher Doug Robbins is next. get going here in the city of Omaha. People come out, they support it, and they have a good time in watching some youngsters kind of move through life. Some on and missed. Arizona State out of the inning without giving up a run. So they'll be coming to bat for their last at bat, trailing 9-4. Candelari, Barola, or a pinch hitter would be the first two hitters, and then they'll move to the top of the lineup. The Stanford Cardinal flirting with the college baseball history book, leading Arizona State 9 4 and attempting to do what no team has done since USC win back to back championships. Bounded foul by Candelari. Ricky Candelari leading off here against Steve Schutrin. He's been on base twice with a fielder's choice and a single to left field. Schutrin relieved freshman Stan Spencer. Emotions at a time like this and this part of the ball game, Brent. You have a one side. Stanford is seeing the possibility of coming back and repeat, which they didn't know, quite frankly, if they were going to be able to do. And it's approaching even closer as we speak. There you see the reaction in their dugout. On the other side, the frustration of seeing the light dimming as they're watching. One out on that call, third strike. Here's Mike Barola. 
And Shetra not wasting any time. Ground ball to short. Paulson up with it, the throw across. And Stanford's one out of way. the hitter. Breaking ball stayed up a little bit. On the inside corner. Line drive, base hit, left field. Arizona State stays alive. Now it's up to John Finn. And a pinch runner comes in. Anthony Manahan will be the runner. Tash injured his left leg when he took a misstep at first base. So they'll use a pinch runner here in the ninth inning. Shitron looking in for the sign. Pitch to Fenn as a strike. And for Arizona State, they keep waiting for that phone call from the governor on the reprieve, but it doesn't look like it's on its way. Rick, not only did you play here, but our director, Joe Assetti, came here with Colgate back in the mid 50s. There's a strike. No balls, two strikes. He was down to his last strike twice earlier in the week. But this time, he's down by five. celebrates there in the infield and we can take a look at that magic moment again here's the dugout anticipating anticipating and it's finally there Shiffrin comes out of the bullpen, only their second pitcher. He relieved freshman Stan Spencer. And as the catch is made on the pop fly, he hugs his catcher in celebration. 
of another national championship for the Stanford Cardinal 9-4 over Arizona State. We'll be right back. Oh, round of lights here. Light that outshines them all. Ask for Bud Light. Ooh, let me know when you're ready for another round. Because everything else is just a light. Fresh all day at my place. Good time. Listen to the great taste of McDonald's. Listen to it. to drive, really like to drive. This is what your next car should be. This is the all-new Pontiac Grand Prix. Get on the Pontiac and ride. Pontiac ride. This is the 1988 Motor Trend Car of the Year. And that ought to be you driving. Get on your Pontiac. We build excitement. The outstanding player of this College World Series for Stanford, pitcher Lee Plummel, who was 2-0 with two complete games. And now let's get out of the field, and here's John Dockery. John. Thank, thank you, Brenda. With Mark Mark was Mark. You make it look easy as though it were your destiny. We all know how hard it is to repeat. What was the key? Uh, a great pitching performance by Spencer, obviously. The freshman has pitched the last three or four crucial games for us, and really a great effort. And, Doc, I didn't think it could be done. I, maybe it's that, that advice you gave me in the Pan American games that put us over the top. But it, I didn't think it could be done, but we did it. I know you were pessimistic coming in. You were, you were seated seventh. There were people way ahead of you, including Arizona State, yet you did it. Well, we were so darn inconsistent all season until the last two weeks, and they never stopped believing in themselves. I told them, don't give up, it'll happen, but I wasn't sure it would happen, but it, they did it. And it did happen. Congratulations, Thank Coach. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to take a break for a station break now and a commercial. We'll be right back, folks. Uh -huh. 